Good morning, uh, Honorable uh, His Excellency uh, Ambassador Bougay, Sister Nehal Saad <laughs> from the United Nations, uh, Her Excellencies, His Excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have not only the honor to speak on uh, my behalf, but I'm also speaking on behalf of Rabbi Eli Abadi, our uh, Jewish uh, representative who has been unable because of okay. some uh, circumstances which is beyond mm -hmm. our, his control, to be here. M may I just, may I, we can't have a better start this year. <laughs> really, having someone speaking on behalf of the rabbi and, and the uh, Islam community, uh, thank you. welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Since we both- uh, That's a big round. By the way, Rabbi Abadi, Eli Abadi, uh, is the chief rabbi of the uh, Edmund Safra Synagogue uh, in uh, New York, in Manhattan. It's on uh, 5th Avenue and 630th Street. Uh, he's also a physician, uh, a gastroenterologist by yeah. training, and an extremely, extremely powerful leader, yeah. an influential leader, and not in just the Jewish community, but in terms of interfaith dialogue and all that. We've been friends for many years. Uh, we attend conferences together, and we work together uh, very closely with each other uh, uh, with respect to, uh, uh, to uh, improving and enhancing understanding uh, between, uh, between diverse faiths. Ladies and gentlemen, I, am, I hate to do this, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to be aided by some sort of uh, prepared uh, comment, but the others will not be. Uh, I will try to speak uh, from the top of my head, uh, if, I, if I may and if I can. Uh, but times really have come. I mean, we sit here, uh, this is the Cathedral of Diplomacy, and you are supposed to be nice, uh, Madam Ambassador, uh, and be, be, be gentle and be kind. But there comes a time where, where truth must be told, and uh, people should really speak as to what really is on the ground. Uh, if you saw the recent election, whether you like it or not, whether you support that or not, of the president we have in the United States, uh, we saw he got elected because being blunt, or being, being realist and be telling people what he thought. This is, this is not to, to promote him. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, but I'm just, just saying that, that the time has come. So please uh, pardon my, my uh, blunt language if at times, but Islam and Muslims have to be, must be defined uh, from, a, from a sphere of, of, of or from, a, from a cornerstone of reality and from the truth, even if it is self-criticism. The, uh, one of the mo three most misunderstood, misunderstood uh, Abrahamic faith, universally known as Islam, has been a victim of defamation as well as its adherents, its adherents that the Muslims are stigmatized on a daily basis for being tormentors and terrorists. The people of other faiths do not trust Muslims, nor do they regard or revere the sanctity and religious sovereignty of this great legion of almost 1.5 billion people, 1.6 billion to be precise. Western scholars, political pundits, and the right-wing media have repeatedly documented evidences that these miseries encountered by the Muslims and people of other faiths are almost all self-inflicted, meaning that we are the cause of a lot of, lot of this misery the Muslims are than anybody else. The burden of proof, proof has always been on the, on the, on the, on, on the Muslims, uh, but it's a, it's a minority group of, of evil mongers from amongst us, from, from, the, uh, from, the, from, from our ranks, from our, 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 our crowds and our population who have done that. Uh, the Muslim leaders, most of the Muslim leaders have not been very, very honest they have not been very uh, forthcoming in terms of uh, articulating the fact that we are, in most instances, uh, are arsonists and we are the firefighters. And this has not stopped and this will not stop. The most deleterious doctrines preached and practiced by the Wahhabism and Salafism are by now become the single most powerful evil, causing bloodshed and destruction across the entire world. These doctrines are the proven basis for the modern day extremism. The gullible Western powers 
who are more interested in their respective national interests, and they have a right to do so, and they, 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 they should be, get frequently hoodwinked by the Wahhabi and Salafi merchants of death. These agents of terror and tyranny have hijacked Islam, and they continue to masquerade around with total impunity. These wicked Wahhabi and Salafi warlords who hail from the kingdom of the Arabian lands and, and who are in control of tremendous amount of wealth, petrol wealth, are going around and doing very bad things. Their cruel and criminal apparatus, apparatus has mastered the art of using the wealth to foment factionalism and falsehood. All across the globe, they have bought out the most powerful lobbying groups, think tanks and the right-wing print and broadcast media, they, who, which, which serves them diligently for a price. The problem of this, this, this the, the, the source of this problem are, are, are these very member states here at the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, who are appeased and who are pandered by 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 United Nations, I'll give you an example uh, of this thing so that you understand. Former Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Ban Ki Moon, is on the record in the in the this this past August when he was uh, told by a certain country uh, we we are not going to name name country uh, said that you have to take our name out of a blacklist. Uh, he said, I cannot do that. It's the decision of the General Assembly that your country has been put in this blacklist. Well, he said, well, that, that's fine. If you don't want to do that, then our aid, our money to uh, South Sudan, the Syrian refugees, and to the Palestinians in the Gaza will be stopped. Uh, he said, well, you know, you're blackmailing me. This is, this is, all, in the black, uh, this is all in the print. I'm not, I'm, in the, I'm not manufacturing anything. I'm saying it as I read it and I, as I heard it, both print and broadcast, widely, widely. So, so what happened here, in the end, a secretary general, such a, such a dominant power and of, of this, this, this you know, uh, institution, was, was forced to do something which he did not want to do. Uh, I know that we have a new Secretary General at the United Nations, and I spoke to the Under Secretary in your uh, presence, uh, uh, Honorable Ambassador, and I asked her to please pass on this message to the new Secretary General that he should not be. And we don't have to worry about, about, uh, about the, uh, uh, you know, just to, just to, it's not a zero-sum game, ladies and gentlemen, just to please, uh, or just to help or aid uh, the refugees, in, in the Syrian refugees, are just to, uh, just to do what we want to do in Gaza or South Sudan. We go and, and, and give this country a pass. The country who was responsible for a lot of massacre and for the bloodshed to go and do this thing in another, in another part of the world. Uh, I would be really interesting uh, to hear a few thoughts from you. How do you see the importance of the interreligious dialogue? Now, so far, you talked about current issues, but yes. here we are today to talk about how we can inspire each other, how can we can work with each other, and that would be very important from your uh, I'm going religious to, I, I was point gonna, of view, as just our very dear friend, the Monsignor, talked about. I was going to come to that, uh, yeah. your Ambassador, but yeah. I wanted some, some yeah. facts to be really established, yeah. you know, here before before we come. Uh, the uh, there's a document which was circulated by Secretary General Kofi Annan in 2004, former Secretary General. Uh, he took a letter from Ali ibn Abi Talib. He was the fourth Khalifa mm -hmm. of Islam. Mm -hmm. And that letter, that document, he wrote 1,500 years ago, dear Ambassador, to, the, to his governor for Egypt, Malik Ashtar, in which he, and I'm going to read excerpts from that document, which says all those things. Which, and it goes to show you that Islam, what I wanted to, what I did, obviously started with the, with the bleak picture, but, but I wanted to go to the, as, to, as to how Islam and the, Muslim, the mindset of the Muslim leadership 1,500 years ago, how much they were aware and how much they were up to, uh, up to, the, up to uh, you know, speed with, with what, what should be done with, with respect to. So I'm going to read the excerpts of that letter for your, for your information. Ali ibn Abi Talib, in, in terms of guiding the uh, 
a governor as to how he should govern. Uh, this is what this is what he said. And you you, you should you take uh, in terms of uh, uh, manifest religious tolerance amongst your subjects. There are two kinds of people: those who have the same religion as you, and are brothers to you, and those who have religion other than yours. They are human beings like you. Men of either category suffer from the same weaknesses and disabilities that human beings are inclined to. They commit sins, indulge in vices, either intentionally or foolishly, and they commit sins uh, they, they unintentionally without realizing the enormity of their deeds. Let your mercy and compassion come to the rescue and help in the same way and to the same extent that you expect Allah to show you, God to show you mercy. In equality is the best. A policy which is based on equality will be largely appreciated. Remember that this displeasure of common man, the have-nots and the depressed person overbalances the approval of the important persons, while the displeasure of few big people will be excused. If the general public and the masses of your subjects are happy with you, so will be the God. The rich always want more. These are the subjects on which, when he spoke, Madam Ambassador, they are the people who will be the worst drag upon you during your moments of peace and happiness, and the least useful to you during your hours of need and adversity. They hate justice the most. They will keep demanding more and more out of state resources and will seldom be satisfied with what they receive and will never be obliged for the favor shown to them if their demands are justified be refused. On the subject of a healthy society, is interdependent. The army and the common men who pay taxes are two important classes. But in a well-faring state, their well-being cannot be guaranteed without proper functioning and preservation of the other classes. The judges and the magistrates, the secretaries of the state and the officers of the various departments who collect various revenues, maintain law and order, as well as preserve peace and amity among the diverse classes of the society. They also guard the rights and privileges of the citizens and look to the performance of the various duties by individuals and classes. And the prosperity of this whole setup depends upon the traders and industrialists. On ensuring an honest judiciary, you must select people of excellent character and high caliber with, with, with meritorious records when they realize that they have committed a mistake in judgment. On poverty leads to, 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 to ruination. If a country is prosperous and it is, its people are well-to-do, then it will, it will be happily and willingly bear any burden. The poverty of the people is the actual cause of the, uh, of the, of the devastation. On the corruption and undermine, uh, corruption, on the subject of under, corruption undermining the, uh, the national well-being, I, wa I want to advise you, Malik Ashtar, that the sources of wealth to the country, one more thing, you must keep an eye over the activities as well as, as well. You know that they are usually stingy, stingy misers, intensely and self-contented. Stay in touch with the people. You must take care not to cut yourself uh, off from the public. Do not place a curtain of false prestige between you and those over whom you rule. Such pretensions and shows of pomp and pride are really manifestations of inferiority complex. Peace brings prosperity, and this is the last thing the Imam Ali uh, said to governor, his governor for Egypt. Uh, he said, if your enemy invites you to a peace treaty, never refuse to accept such an, such an offer, because peace will bring rest and comfort to your armies, will relieve you of your anxieties and worries, and will bring prosperity and, and affluence to your people. But, 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 but even after such treaties, be very careful of the enemies and do not place too much confidence in their promises because they often resort to peace treaties to deceive and delude you and take advantage of your negligence. On, on terms of uh, history revealing uh, these things, the, the Imam uh, again again advised. This is a letter, uh, Madam Ambassador, which was distributed by the, by Mr. Amran to the to the country. So so it is it is really uh, it's, 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 well, I just want to make a make a point of the fact that Islam and the and the Muslim leadership in in the in the times, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is fifteen hundred years uh, history. Uh, did a remarkable job in terms of advancing the civilization, advancing the peace and harmony and the brotherhood. Uh, but, but I am, like many of us, are very upset of what is going on 
the, 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 what, what really bothers us, and, and you can see mm -hmm. my frustration, is that people of other faiths don't trust us. I mean, this, this talk about interfaith, uh, it, which is, has really become a, a, a sort of a, I'm sorry to say that, a cottage industry, is very nice. But if we don't trust each other, this, this is not going to, to help us. So the idea is to ask, uh, and we have got now emerging, in, in England we had uh, Theresa May, who just became prime minister. In, in uh, you know, uh, in the United States we had the election, the United Nations you know, got, got a new secretary general. This is a time to really be very, very candid with them and, 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 and try to, to explain to them that please don't typify a Muslim by just calling him a terrorist or, or, or a warmonger or a, or, a, or a person who's really trying to, to create bloodshed and destruction. That's not the case, it's a minority which is hurting us very much. And they are giving a very bad name to Islam. And it is not fair. The rest of the Muslims, there are 1.6 billion. These people not, uh, are not, they're, they're not even in million. These, these people who are, who are doing, who are bringing this, this misery and mayhem to the, to the world. And, and whether it is mm -hmm. Daesh, it's Al-Shabaab, uh, Boko Haram, mm -hmm. uh, Taliban, it is, it is just, just, yeah. just uh, very sad. Yeah. So I thank you very much for listening to my, mm. my brazen talk. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.